so let's look at the receptors that um, spike protein and nicotine attach to. So even though that even though there's uh, receptors that nicotine attaches to, they're not really meant for nicotine. They're meant for acetylcholine, which is the primary neurotransmitter that these receptors accept. The two receptors that nicotine can bind to is called the alpha-7, and there's also the alpha-4, beta-2 receptor. Now, there's many others that nicotine can also bind to, but these two are the most important in the context of long COVID. The spike protein mainly binds to the ACE2 receptor. It can bind to the alpha-7 as well um, in some studies. So let's look at what happens when something binds to the receptor. It can do one of three things. It can either activate the receptor, it can block the receptor, or it can deactivate or downregulate uh, what happens with the receptor. So those are the three main things. Nicotine does not bind to the same spots that the spike protein binds to, and therefore can't really alter or change what the spike protein does. It can't knock it off, it can't degrade it, you really can't do a whole lot um, to the spike protein. Let's talk about the receptors in general. Um, the alpha-7 is in the brain. It's on your immune cells. And it's also part of your autonomic nervous system. The A7 helps reduce inflammation if it's activated. It helps support learning and memory. And it helps modulate the vagus nerve. The alpha-4 beta-2 receptor is mostly in the brain, and it's also somewhat in the autonomic nervous system. Now, this receptor, nicotine, does activate, and strongly, and it can increase the amount of dopamine released. That's, that's part of the reward system and addiction part of nicotine. But it also helps with attention and focus increase, and it helps regulate the autonomic um, nervous system tone. So this is really how um, it all interplays.